geography, I'm a dermatologist, and I work in a small city close to Milan, Parese, and close to the company that produces this laser. For this reason, probably, I have frequently relationship with uh, the research and development department of uh, Quanta System. <clears throat> but coming back to my topics, uh, some years ago, the company, the industry, introduced in the market uh, the picosecond technology for the treatment of the tattoo, for the tattoo removal. But uh, soon, the physician discovered the possibility to use this uh, technology for other applications, for example, for the treatment of pigmented lesion and for the skin restoring. In this chart, you can see the great difference between the two co-switcher technology, the nanosecond and picosecond technology. As you can see, the picosecond technology works with high quantity of energy in very short pulse emission mode. But to better explain this complicated concept, I use uh, a, a trick. If you compare in another metrical scale, laser that work in second and laser that work in picosecond, is like if you compare a gnat with an elephant. But if you compare the quantity of watt of different laser present in the market, laser that works in watt and in gigawatt, it's like if you compare a needle of mesotherapy, this is megawatt with Bujai Khalifa, or this is uh, gigawatt with a Niverest. Inside of uh, picosecond laser, you have Everest of energy. But following a, an old payoff of another Italian brand, the power is nothing without control. And this is exactly what's happened. Because if it's true that working with high quantity of energy in short emission mode, you are able to create the photomechanical effect inside of the target. So you are able to induce a, a high pressure in small molecular size, around two bar, working with very short pass duration, is absolutely true that sometimes so high quantity of energy that you are using create plasma. And plasma sometimes is a barrier for the laser light penetration. Follow me because this is very interesting. Joule, fluence. You can create fluence working with watt per time divided square centimeter. So you can create high fluence, high quantity of joule, working with high pulse duration, working with high quantity of watt, but every time you increase the spot dimension to promote great penetration of the laser light, you reduce the fluence. So if you decide to work with very short pulse duration, if you fix the pulse duration, the pulse weight, and you work with large spot size, the only solution to have enough fluence is work with high quantity of fat, high quantity of energy, but you create plasma. Okay, so which was the challenge? To create the best photomechanical effort by various picopulse weights, working with the same quantity of energy. So we decide to investigate the possibility to add in the picosecond emission mode, in the picosecond domain, two more pulse weight. So actually, inside of the machine that you can see, there is four different pulse weight. Three in the picosecond emission mode, 450 and 374, 1064 and 532, 600, 750 plus nanosecond. And in our opinion, the possibility to modulate the pulse wave induce a lot of advantages, clinically speaking, especially in some applications. The first of all, I will speak about tattoo removal, because working with the possibility to find the most suitable tuning induce better clinical outcome. I know, and you know, that uh, when we speak about ink, uh, inks, we speak about very small particular size. More of the most uh, ink present in the market has very small dimension, less than 100 nanomicrons. So we are speaking about nano size range. But when you introduce pigment inside of the skin, and this is the quantity that you need to, to tattoo to pigment the skin, 250 milligram per square centimeter. When you introduce these small molecules inside of the skin, you have a clusterization. And you can find big agglomerate of pigment around 0.5 to 40 micrometer 
So the target is bigger respect to the particle size of the heat. And uh, to have a very good result, you, you must reduce this dimension in very small particular size to promote the correct phagocytosis and the correct cleaning of the skin. So I am telling something of strong. After years of clinical experience, of my personal clinical experience, I consider 450 picosecond and 1064, and 1064 nanometer a clinical limit for the remotion of uh, black tattoo. So I'm, I'm telling that what I told you in the past was not completely true. Why? Because uh, we discovered during our clinical trial that every time we work with high quantity of energy, high quantity of fluids, we create plasma on the surface of the skin. Plasma induces a resurfacing of the epidermal layer. So, and in the same time, this ablative effect reduces the penetration of the light inside of the real target that is the pigment. So, in my opinion, in our opinion, matching pass duration to ink particle size is the pathway to promote a transepidermal pigment removal in the first session. So when you have big pigment, so you have great agglomerate, probably nanosecond works better. When the dimension of the target is reduced, probably sub nanosecond works better. When you have small particular size, picosecond is the best solution, is the gold standard. So the possibility to have in the same machine, the four, five different emission mode give you the possibility to treat the tattoo in the best mode. First session with nanosecond, second session with sub nanosecond, 700 picosecond, and uh, the third and fourth treatment with picosecond emission mode. Again, the same uh, procedure, nanosecond, picosecond, sub nanosecond, and picosecond. Again, here in the first treatment, we, we use nanosecond in the Third and fourth se uh, session, we use sub nanosecond, and in the last session, we use picosecond. In only eight sessions, we are able to achieve these clinical results. Okay, and for pigmented lesion, the, the situation is similar, right? because every time we use nanosecond technology, we are very active. We are absolutely very active. But as you can see in this histological image, Working with nanosecond emission mode, you, you induce a, a disruption of the epidermis from the dermis. You create this uh, separation, this partial separation. And this means that you are creating a lot of inflammatory reaction. And especially in some skin type, Asiatic skin type, inflammatory reaction represents a, a big, a big problem. It's not an issue, it's a problem. <laughs> because every time you can have hyperpigmentation. So the idea, sorry, when you use picosecond technology, this separation is not present. You can see the action on the melanosome, you can see the vacuolization of the melanosome, but there is not any separation of the epidermical and dermis uh, layer. So the inflammatory reaction is put it under control when you work with picosecond technology. The problem was that if you have so great target, if the, the lesion is so pigmented, also picosecond emission mode, when you work with so short pass duration, 370 picosecond mode, could be too much aggressive. For this reason, we have introduced the sub nanosecond mode. This is the results that you can achieve working with, uh, with uh, the sub-nano picosecond emission mode, different type of lesion, different type of thickness of the lesion, and different quantity of pigment. In this case, we, we are treated with uh, three different emission modes, the pigmented lesion, and uh, the final results, uh, in our opinion, could be acceptable. But where we, 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 we saw an, an amazing application of this uh, technology is in the picoplasma resurfacing. You know that uh, working with uh, 
fractional picolesio second, we are able to create LIOB inside of the Vermis layer. But during our experimental trial, we discovered that when we increase the level of the fluence, unfortunately, we create plasma on the surface, we create resurfacing of the epidermal layer, and we reduce the penetration of the LIOB. So every time we, we need works with high quantity of fluence, working with short emission mode, short pulse weight, we create plasma. And plasma reduces the penetration and reduces the formation of the LIOB in the deep desmal layers. This is exactly what you can see with, uh, when you work with 1.4 joule. The LIOB is very superficial, and you can see the resurfacing of the surface. When you work with less quantity of fluence, you don't have any resurfacing of the surface, and you have deep formation of the LIOB. When you work with very low quantity of fluence, you have formation of the LIOB, but very, very superficial in the papillary dermis layer close to the epidermical dermical junction. So, which was the goal? The goal was to create uh, with the high fluence, big LIOB in the deep dermis layer, where we won't have an interaction in some clinical pathology and aesthetical condition. And how to obtain this? Exactly increasing uh, the pulse duration. So working with the same fluence, but increasing the pulse weight of the picosecond uh, laser emission mode, we are able to create the LIOB deep in the reticular dermis layer. So working with this system, we can remove the skin restoring of uh, laxity skin. We can remove uh, the association of uh, uh, pigmentary lesion treatment plus uh, the skin tonicity. Or we can treat the scar. This is a, a scar induced by a wrong laser treatment. You can see before and after with the picosecond fractional technology. Or, and I totally agree with the speaker that spoke before than me, the possibility to use the the fillers, the AHA filler, like a biological scaffold, create an amazing opportunity for the future treatment of the linear traumatic and acne scar. And this is the result that you can achieve after one year. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.